Let's go! It's back, baby! And the GOAT has spoken out about the new college football video game. Notice how I phrase that. We're going to save that for the end of the video, though, because today, before signing day, which is going to be so huge for tomorrow, I want to focus on these opening press conferences because Ed Orgeron, along with new defensive coordinator Durante Jones, new defensive line coach Andre Carter, John, 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 Andre Carter, new linebackers coach Blake Baker, and new general manager Austin Thomas, they all spoke to the media today. And I'm going to give you the really good stuff, but the one bad thing that I am a little worried about. So, obviously, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I need your feedback, okay? Because, you know, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of defensive schemes today. Let's go! Let's start off with the good. Durante already has a barber in Baton Rouge? How does he keep this line so fresh? I talked about this in our first ever video about Durante Jones, and I had to go get a shape up to get on Durante's level. And Durante, if you do need a barber in Baton Rouge, go to my guys at Hilltop, all right? Right next to the Leo Stanley Butler Community Center. I'm telling you, Darian will get you right. Been the second black coordinator in LSU history. And Ed Orgeron mentioned it's important to have younger coaches and coaches that could relate to the players and you do get more diverse you do bring in nfl minds which is going to help in theory with recruiting so i'm really excited about this and it was a great press conference from durante and everyone that spoke to the media very much like jake Peets, you walk away far more impressed after you hear their vision durante talked about communication, which was a huge issue last year for the LSU defense. He kept saying that word over and over, communication, and that does need to be fixed. And Blake Baker said something specific that we should not sleep on. Let's take a look. So Blake said, I saw the linebackers were playing with poor technique, and we have to fix it. Thank goodness. Now, I would have liked to have heard specifics, what were the linebackers doing wrong, but still, I'm glad Blake was able to acknowledge it, Bo Pelini's out the door, and we should, in theory, get better linebacker coaching, and Blake Baker went on to say that he's not here to be the defensive coordinator. He said LSU was the only job he would have taken as a linebacker's coach to leave Miami, so you get the best of both worlds here. You get an experienced play caller to help out an inexperienced play caller, and a guy who's coming in with a lot of energy, which I think is great. And look, Austin Thomas was wonderful. Andre Carter was wonderful. Andre Carter shared a funny anecdote about Ellis, or excuse me, Ed Orgeron trying to recruit him to USC. He was really good. Austin Thomas, I bragged about his interview with T-Bob last week. He said some pretty interesting things over the past week or so about how different recruiting and roster management is now, which is what Austin Thomas's big role is going to be, understanding numbers, the portal, and all of that. And he acknowledged to T-Bob that, look, we have to understand that players are more powerful than they've ever been before. So it was a mostly great press conference opening for all the guys, but... There is a caveat that kind of, sort of, concerns me. Let's get to it. So, here we go. Ed Orgeron says LSU will be based out of a 4-3. Now, Durante continued with that very thing. And he said the following here via The Advocate. Coach has probably already talked to you about basing out of a 4-3 when you have some studs on the outside with Ali Gay and you have Andre Anthony and those guys that could set the edge and play fast. So, you guys know how I feel about a 4-3 defense. Not many defenses do it, number one. And number two, well, 
LSU went to the 4-3 last year for the first time in a long time, and we saw their historically bad numbers. There was only a few schools that gave up seven yards per play defensively on average, and LSU was one of them. In fact, But that shows you it is a direct correlation of how bad the LSU defense was. Ed Orgeron talked about this. He said his vision with the defense is getting back to LSU defense, the kind he grew up watching, making it tough on opponents, not giving up easy points. So I, I do have a problem with the statement because you are essentially, while you're making all these progressive young coaches, saying that you want to go back to the way defense used to be played, which is not good. You don't want to go back to the way defense used to be played because offenses have changed so much. And LSU, going back to the 4-3, LSU is one of the few schools that run a base 4-3, and you saw what happened. Now, I understand a lot of you will say, well, we didn't have the personnel. We didn't have the right personnel to run the 4-3. And you're right. LSU did not have the right personnel, and their personnel is going to be better to run the 4-3 this year. But how much better? Is it going to be good enough to prevent the things that kept happening to the LSU defense? And we talked about this, and we will continue to talk about this on live streams. When we went to the 4-3, we became historically bad. It just just happened. Now, a lot of that is attrition. A lot of that is the offense not being as good as it was the year before. And all those things hold true. I have conversations with people I know in the coaching industry, and you see here that it, for him as a play caller, it is a lot easier to call plays against even fronts. And an even front is a 4-3. An odd front is a three-man front. And essentially, it comes down to how much speed do you have on the field? And when you run a four-man front with two traditional ends, and you know the likelihood that they're not going to back out into coverage, instead of having seven guys, or excuse me, instead of having eight guys defending the pass, there are seven guys, you know pre-snap, with four guys on the defensive line, that there are only going to be seven guys maximum in coverage. Well, in a 3-4, from time to time, Caleb Von Chason would back out into coverage. And in an odd front, you don't know which gap the defensive line might be able to shoot. But if you're in a 4-3, where unless you have elite 1 and 3 techniques or elite defensive ends, unless you have those type of playmakers, like the Saints have in their four-man front, you know, it's hard to run that defense. It really, really is. Look, I don't care what defense you run. As long as it works, it works. You could be in a one one nine. If that works, let's do it. But ultimately, this right here is a problem because every defense wants to make it tough on the opponent. Every defense doesn't want to give up easy points. I'm, I'm optimistic. I hope this works out. And it's definitely going to help if Elias Ricks and Derek Singley Jr. are fully healthy. We are definitely going to get better safety play because... Well, Durante is probably a better safeties coach than Bill Bush, and Durante's probably going to be a better defensive coordinator than Bo Pelini, which, you know, isn't saying much. And Blake Baker's definitely going to help out, and Andre Carter. I'm high on all the coaching hires. I really am. But the scheme might be outdated. The number one goal for every defense should be the following. Don't give up deep place. That should be the basic tenet. Now, creating turnovers is great. Being aggressive is great. But if doing those two things cost you the ability to defend deep plays, you don't have shots at winning football games. And that's how bad the LSU defense was. They gave up so many deep plays. There was not but only two games where LSU was good at defending the deep pass. So, you know, unless you fix that, you're not going to have any success. And we're going to see the same problems as last year. And, you know, I understand. The old school thought is, well, we need to get guys in the box to stop the run. No, the exact opposite is true. 
You need to make sure you have enough fast guys out there to stop their pass. Because as analytics show and the way philosophies of offense are now, they want to throw the ball. You want them to force themselves to run the football. I don't care if we have a light box. If they're running the football, I'd rather them run the football instead of throw the football. And with a 4-3, with having four defensive linemen down, it is optimal to throw the football because their seven guys in coverage have to defend your five potential pass catchers and the quarterback as a runner. So that's the problem with running a 4-3. It's just not necessarily X's and O's philosophy. It's a very macro view on how offenses work now. Okay, and we'll discuss more about this on the live stream. It doesn't mean that none of this means that a 4-3 can't work. But it does mean that a lot of things have to go right for your 4-3 to work in the modern offense. Now, or modern defense, let's take a look at the new NCAA football game because, well, I got to correct myself. It's not the new NCAA football game, the new college football game. The only thing I'll say is that the GOAT has spoken. So here's Joey B. All I ever wanted was to be on the cover of this game, and as soon as I graduate, they bring it back. For those who never stop believing, college football is coming back. But notice, this is a major takeaway. It's not NCAA, it's college football. No NCAA. The most important thing is that we're getting this game that so many of us played growing up. I'm not a gamer as much as I used to be, but I am super excited that the one game that I played a whole lot is making its triumphant return. My only stipulation is the first game, and I even Instagrammed about this, and I rarely Instagram anymore. The first game. Better feature the best player in college football history on the cover. And that is our dear beloved Joey B, okay? Their last cover athlete was Shoelace, Denard Robinson. And I liked Shoelace. Look, he used to wear a a defensive lineman number at quarterback. Who doesn't love that? But Joey freaking Burrow better be on the cover. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Okay, and you know it means a lot to him if he tweets it out because he doesn't tweet a whole lot. So let me know what you think of the new video game. Obviously, subscribe to the channel. We're going to have some fun live streams coming up. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Woo. Let's go. We got some, uh, oh, we got more gumbo tonight. Nothing wrong with more gumbo.